Of course, they're blowing outside. CJ is asleep. My baby never sleeps. He's given me long enough to dye my roots, shower, blow out my hair, hopefully make some of this video. And of course, somebody's blowing leaves outside. So I guess I'll be back when they stop blowing leaves. We are back with a little co-star who woke up. I think they're done blowing leaves outside. I had a friend stop by. This was like 45 minutes later. I did want to do a six month update because so many things have changed. We will talk about baby, me, postpartum depression, hair loss. I'll do a body check after this, just so you could see where I'm at. I feel like so much has changed and happened at the six month point. So let's do it. Real quick, we'll start with baby. He is on solids. I did a whole video about him starting solids, getting the advice from the doctor, what they suggest, how I'm doing it, baby led weaning purees, all that stuff. So I will post that video up in the cards or the description box below. He is still not sleeping through the night. I've heard so many different things from various mothers who say, yes, their baby slept at six months. Doctors say they should be sleeping by six months. And then I have moms who are like, listen, my baby's 18 months, two years, and they're still not sleeping through the night. It's different for every baby. It's not textbook. Doctors go by the textbook. So honestly, I'm giving it until eight months and then I will reassess there. It is what it is. My baby wakes up at night and I'm fine with it. He is just about to start crawling. So he is up on all fours. He's really strong. I mean, he's Adam's baby and my baby. He's been working out with me since he was a little poppy seed in my belly. I'm joking. I know that has nothing to do with it, but he is kind of getting up on all fours and rocking a little bit. He hasn't figured out how to move forward and he doesn't scoot backwards yet. I think that'll happen in the next couple of weeks, but more than that, he just wants to be walking. He wants to be standing he wants to actually like if you hold his hands he will start to put one foot in front of the other but he kind of just like steps all over his feet and he's not there yet but Adam did walk at six months and his mom's like if I didn't have a picture of it nobody would believe me she sent us the picture of it I wonder if I could find it if I'll find it I'll show you guys it's the cutest thing ever and for everyone that thinks that CJ looks just like Adam you'll see that CJ looks nothing well he's a good mix between us but everyone's like he's his twin not in that picture at least he is this face mini as far as talking and babbling and baby talk he's so cute i say hi to him all the time and i didn't realize it until one morning he woke up and he's like ha i know it's very early and i don't know if it's coincidence or not but i think he says ha because even my girlfriend just stopped by and when he woke up he looked at her and he's like ha aside from that it's just baby talk and it's adorable da 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 but not for Adam, there is mama, 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 but not for me. There's like ba ba ba. There's all different kinds of like consonant sounds, and of course vowel. He started with ah, uh, and so we'll go back and forth. Sometimes I'll see if I can get him to do it different pitches, which is fun that you play back and forth with baby. Christian, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I can get him to do it if I. Siri will only ever answer me when I'm talking to CJ, not Siri. Isn't that annoying? I think he might know his name. I'm not sure. Christian. Hi. I don't know if that's him knowing his name or saying a command at him and he's looking at me. God, a command. That sounds terrible. There's this one line he says when he's mad and he's clearly saying something in his mind. It starts with da, 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 da. And then he goes into all these other syllables, but it's the exact Sorry. same. Could you say that again? <sighs> I'm having trouble hearing it scares you. me. Siri, I was not talking to you. I get so mad because he, I always say she, only ever answers me when I'm not talking. But if I need S-I-R-I, never answers. Anyway, it's the same sentence every time. And it's when he's frustrated or mad and it's like, da, 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 whatever it is. But it's the same every time. So it's his little line. And I'm like, ooh. He's mad at us. You get mad? Okay, and starting this week, I do have a video of this. He started clapping his hands and I don't know if he knows, like I'll say clapping hands and he does it, but I don't know if it's just coincidence or not. And it's usually only if Adam's holding him standing up or like I'm holding him standing up or if he's standing in his walker, like it's hard, not walker, in his uh, skip hop bouncy thing. Because like in these seats, it's hard for him to get his hands together. Last six months update for him specifically is he's really, really 
really, really, really attached to me where he's starting to get really bad separation anxiety. Like last night he was with Adam, his dad, he's with him all the time and he didn't even want to let me take a shower to the point where I got out of the shower. I take a very fast shower all the time anyway, but I could hear him and he was so upset. It was like that, <laughs> couldn't catch his breath, double breath trying to calm down when he, when I got to him. So he's very attached right now. I'm with him all day, every day. So we're talking about potentially doing daycare, even if it's just at the gym for like 40 minutes a day or something like that, you know, when we can get back into the gym. It's this catch 22 though, because I know once he's in daycare and once he's around other kids, he's gonna start getting sick. I know I also want for him to start getting sick because it helps to build immunity, but do I want him to start getting sick in the era of COVID and everything starting to shut down again? It's getting bad. It's just a weird time right now. It's a fine line and I don't know what I'm gonna do, but that's the baby update as far as me. Let's start with, I went back to work in October. That's been a challenge, but it hasn't been terrible because Adam's also been working from home. So we just kind of tag team it. If I have a meeting, I will have him clear his schedule. He'll take CJ in the other room. I can't type if I have him. I can't take notes. I can't concentrate. It's just not good for anybody. So lesson learned, induction into mom life. I know you guys who are moms through the pandemic have been going through this for two years and it's just, here I am. So work remotely so far so good as far as breastfeeding you guys know it was a struggle for me it's been a journey i don't make enough to feed him from me solely thoroughly enjoying our breastfeeding relationship i wish i made more i don't it's just life i'm not upset about it at nighttime he breastfeeds and he supplements with a few bottles a day now that he's starting to eat solids that's going to be a next step it's only been a couple of weeks so and i keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping because they're really really messing up his stomach we'll go from there but still breastfeeding as much as possible and i'm really really enjoying the journey he has bit me a couple of times which has been really painful and i think looking back it's when he went from four ounce bottles to he was drinking two four ounce bottles at a time so i went up to eight ounce bottles they're nine ounce bottles but i'll give him eight ounces as a formula in there those were a faster flow bottle because i know with breastfed babies you try to keep them with a slow flow number one nipple that was hard to say but i couldn't find a bigger bottle i don't i guess they don't make a bigger bottle like a stage two bottle with a stage one nipple because i think those bottles were so fast flow and easy for him to drink he was getting frustrated on the boob and he was biting and pulling to try to get it to come out faster so i've kind of been going back and forth between the two he sort of stopped i should probably comment on teething i thought it was also from teething everything's in the mouth chewing on everything he doesn't have any teeth that broke through yet i do feel kind of hard Hard spot, spot, hard spots on his gum, but all over, like even the molar parts. And I know you get molars like way later in like two years. So nothing yet, but I know it's happening. He does enjoy teethers to chew on. Sometimes he likes them cold. Sometimes he doesn't. He's a picky baby. Like he doesn't like pacifiers, never really took them. I think it's that texture. But he does chew on everything and like gnaw. It's not like he's just kind of sucking on things he gnaws so we're definitely in the process of teething my postpartum hair loss was horrific we're just turning the corner but it started probably like three and a half four months it wasn't like a slow progression literally i was in the shower one day maybe like a softball amount of hair came out in the shower i took a picture of it i keep saying this but if i can find it i'll put it in after the shower brushing out my hair i lost probably a tennis ball sized hairball that was twice in like 15 minutes right every time i showered after that no not showered <laughs> i shower every single day that is one thing i told myself because this is just a sidebar so many mothers told me i haven't showered in weeks i know that's also probably part of postpartum anxiety depression we'll get to that but for me i promised myself before the baby was born no matter what i will shower every single day whether that meant the baby sleeping, whether that meant waiting all day and sitting around in sweaty clothes until Adam came home and could take him. I did that sometimes. Sometimes it was sitting in his little frog chair. I call this senior frog because I name everything because that's me. Sitting in senior frog in his little activity mat, the baby Einstein one on the floor of the bathroom. Even if that meant crying, I would shower. It's just that was one thing I promised myself with a non-negotiable. That said, I do not wash my hair every day. I wash my hair once, maybe a couple times a week. So with every hair wash, 
would come out probably a softball size ball. I'm sure if I washed my hair every single day, that would be a little bit less, but my hair was all over, all over the bed, all over the couch, all over me, all over Adam, all over both of our cars. We get so scared because hair can get wrapped around baby's fingers, toes, boy parts. It's called a hair tourniquet. It'll turn their little fingers or toes or God forbid boy parts you don't realize the hair is wrapped around there and it'll swell around it and turn purple. It's like a tourniquet, but it's a piece of your hair. I'm so afraid when I see my hair on him. That lasted till probably around the six month, six month mark. My hair is just starting to finally slow down. You could see I literally just dyed the roots this morning because it's also very, very, very white. I don't know if that has anything to do with postpartum. I've been gray for a long time, but you could see my baby hairs. And not only is it hair that fell out, my hair also was very weak and broken. Like I have these funny bangs. It would just break all over the place. It just got very weak. I did continue my prenatal until probably two or three weeks ago. Even though my hair looks full, this is all the hair on my head. I have fine hair to begin with, but this is all the hair on my head. I'm sure you guys have noticed. I have been straightening it more recently and that was mostly just so I could brush it every single day because if I could brush out the pieces that were falling out every day, then it was less traumatic to see myself losing that much hair in the shower. But there were times, plenty of times, you've seen me with curly hair, that I couldn't and I would just get that big hairball. It would be traumatic. I would throw it away, just try not to think about it. And it's just part of it. This is so perfect talking about postpartum hair loss. Irresistible Me reached out to me to see if I wanted to collaborate on a video and talk about their hair extensions. So I have some huge events coming up in the next couple of weeks. It is absolutely perfect timing. I was kind of on the fence about what I would think. I've only had one brand of hair extensions before and mm, they did the job. Like they didn't match so well, but they matched enough and you guys know how it is. Let me tell you, these are incredible and the amount of hair that you get with these extensions is just unbelievable. So I got the Royal Clip-Ins. There are so many wefts, I actually forgot one and went back and put it in after the fact. They have the ones that start with, it's like five clips, four clips, three clips. I think they have two, three clips, two clips, and then the one clips for the side. So you can see I'm just pulling some hair down and then I am putting in each weft one at a time. Do you guys see? It matches my hair absolutely perfectly. If your hair looks like mine, this is the dark ombre. Perfect. It just takes a little bit of practice to get them in, but once you have done it enough times, they go in in minutes flat, period. I've done this so many times before, I could just get them right in. Once you have them in, they blend so well with your hair, nobody knows you're wearing them whatsoever. Zero damage because they clip right into your hair and clip right out, just like another hair accessory. They're made out of 100% human hair. They offer 100% free returns on their website. They color match you so beyond perfectly, it is guaranteed. And I'm telling you, look, I mean, I can't even say enough. Just look at what you see on the video, how well these match my hair. They provide clip-ins, tape-ins, ponytails, single clip volumizers if you need extra on the sides, and all kinds of accessories. They also have a quiz on the site that helps you choose and find the best product and hair for you. They're offering my subscribers a 5% discount with the code irresistibleme underscore Roseanne. I will put the link to their website down below, but again, it is irresistibleme underscore Roseanne. Check the description box for the spelling because my name's spelled funny and there's some capitals in there. You'll get 5% off there, but they're also offering 50% off of all of their stuff on their website right now. If you choose to get their hair extensions, which I highly recommend, please feel free to tag me on Instagram. Now back to the video. Okay, let's talk about emotions, postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. It's been a whirlwind. Thought I escaped it, I know I didn't. I found myself a lot of times just kind of lost in thought. For me, I found myself internalizing things. I cried a lot in the beginning. That definitely tapered off. I know emotions surrounding breastfeeding. Hormones are crazy. But there are so many things about breastfeeding that are totally false that you hear. Like you shed tons and tons of weight. Those girls are unicorns because everybody I talk to, we've gained. But 
we'll get there in a minute. A lot of people have said, and a lot of the research I've done, breastfeeding hormones make them, from what my midwife told me, your estrogen shoots through the roof right after you have the baby. So while you're pregnant, you have progesterone, that's high. As soon as you have the baby, that goes, your progesterone goes back down and your estrogen goes flying up to help you produce the milk. This is what I was told. I don't know how true this is. It's what the midwife told me at the hospital. I've not done my own research. I don't know why the midwife would lie or have false facts, you know? Estrogen for my body causes all of the traditional PMS symptoms, okay? So I've not had mood swings, but I've had a couple of moments of like frustration. I found myself just lost in thought a lot. Not good thoughts, a lot. I found myself feeling unworthy, undeserving. My confidence kind of fell through the toilet. Like I don't look like myself. I'm still carrying extra weight. Clothes fit me funny and differently up until about now. Right now I'm starting to see positive changes in my figure, so it's helping. Does that matter? Logically, no. Tell that to a hormonal woman. I feel old, I feel ugly, I feel a lot of stuff. I know it's hormonal. Lack of sleep is a huge one. A little bit emotional. I think there were points where I'm like, I feel stupid, so unworthy of love. Ups and downs, ups and downs. So yes, I believe that's postpartum and breastfeeding hormones. And I think we're turning the bend. We'll see. I have not gotten my period back yet. I'm breastfeeding, so, but I'm not breastfeeding all of that that much. I have a feeling though, it's like fighting to come back right now, just based off of eating and emotions and like things going on down there. So we'll see, but that's how I feel. I'll let you know. I'm enjoying not having it in the break. I also do want to get pregnant again at some point in the not too distant future, an older mom, and I wanna give him a sibling. So I wouldn't mind if it came back. I could tell you when I do get it back how it is because I've heard her stories about cramps and excessive bleeding and your first couple of periods are irregular is what I've heard. I don't know because I haven't experienced it yet but if you want to know I can update you. My pelvic floor in the beginning was peeing myself constantly when I sneezed when I worked out it was awful I hated it. Now I'm at the point where I can run I'm okay I can jump like onto a box, totally fine. Sneezing, pretty much okay. Every once in a while, I'll have a little dribble, but it's evened itself out. I tried to jump rope a couple weeks back and I was just constantly peeing myself with every jump. So I don't know if that's the quickness and the consistency, which is crazy because running technically is a series of little jumps. I do make sure when I go to the park and work out, I go to the bathroom probably two or three times before we even start. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But last night we were cooking dinner and I had like a big sneeze and I was like, ooh, I didn't pee myself. So I think the pelvic floor- hey, You think that's funny? I know, it's such a weird thing to talk about, right? but you are so worth it. That's kind of subsided. I'll jump rope and I'll let you guys know, but so far so good with that. My joints hurt all the time. My shoulder, my elbow, I've had knee problems for years and this hip, just sports injuries, overuse injuries, you name it. So I thought it was also due to just like working out hard and consistently again, and we'll get to that in a second, but I just heard yesterday that you still have relaxin running through your body and that's the hormone that's increased during pregnancy that makes your joints relax so your pelvis can open up when it's time to deliver the baby. Even if you have a C-section, your body doesn't know that. So you still have that running through your body, I wanna say for a year, I can't remember. So that's probably why your joints hurt more during this time too, which is like a light bulb over my head. I love that kind of stuff. I still have to be careful with that. But that brings me to my body itself. I'll show you guys what I look like. As far as my diet, let's start there. I was completely, I don't wanna say off the rails because I never eat sugar, like cakes, cookies, anything like that. We just don't keep it in the house. We just don't eat it. Snacks like Doritos, like we eat very, very clean and natural but I was eating a ton. And I also was eating things that I don't normally eat. Like we would go out to breakfast and I would get toast with butter with my eggs. We were doing that all the time. I was eating meat all the time still. And I told myself, 
I would give myself until six months, which just so happened to be right around New Year's, right? So I said I would do six months because of breastfeeding and then I would tighten stuff up. I got to like, the last week in December, last week, week, two weeks in December, and I was just kind of like over all of it. So I started to cut my meat back a lot. I started to cut out all of the junk, all of the excessive snacking, which was like, we keep a lot of nuts in the house, but nuts add up if you're eating that all day long. That's a ton of calories and a ton of fat for a minimal amount of food. So it's not filling up your belly. You're eating a ton of it. You can pack on calories fast, cut that back. And I started seeing a significant difference. The last maybe week or two, I've been hungry and I went backwards with that. That's where I was saying, I think my hormones, I think I might be getting my period back. Adam and I for probably since Thanksgiving, this is January 20th, we've been very, very consistent with our workouts. We turned up the heat, we go almost every day, and I have been seeing a difference with that. On the scale though, I started at before pregnancy, very lean, muscular, I'm 5'3", but I have a lot of muscle on my body, and I started at 137. The day I gave birth, I know for a fact, because they weighed me that day at my doctor's appointment, where they told me I was in labor, I was 174 the day I gave birth. As of my six week appointment, disclaimer, numbers don't mean a lot. I just want to give you guys a reference. By the way, before pregnancy, I was in a size six, medium or small, sometimes a four, but basically a six. The day of my six week checkup, I was 154 pounds throughout. Like I went up to 156, I think at one point 158, just because of bad eating choices, breastfeeding, adding in as much stuff as I could to try to increase my milk supply. 158 for a while. Then I dropped back down to 156. Now I'm around 152, trying to get back down to one between 137 and 140. And I know my body is just different. So I am back in a size six, pretty much six, eight maybe. My tops all fit fine. My bottoms, I can wear a six, but they're tight. My stomach has flattened out. I mean, it's still puffy, I guess is the right word. I don't think I'll ever have the body I had before baby back and that's fine. I just want to be healthy. And right now I need to clean my diet up so I'm healthy. But you know, vanity is a little bit of a factor. I'm not going to lie. We were women and I don't know that I'll ever have a six pack again, but I wouldn't mind flattening out my stomach. Oh, and here's the other thing. As my stomach is shrinking back, I'm noticing my skin is looser. I did not get any stretch marks with this pregnancy, but my belly stretched and the skin right above, right around my belly button, like a circle turned almost gray. It was so stretched out. So I can kind of see stretched out skin. Okay, let's get to that. I'll show you guys my belly and what's going on there. Here's my body. Clothes do make a big difference. These are high-waisted, so it looks like I have a line. It looks like my stomach's flatter than it actually is. You can see, you can see my V muscles are back. In my hips, I'm wider here. I'm starting to see lines again, but this is what I'm talking about, like this skin here. This skin here is just kind of like loose. Not terrible, I don't hate it. It's not nearly as bad as it could be. You could see it still pokes out a little bit. This is me sucking in. This is me completely relaxed. I have, just so you know, only eaten breakfast so far today. So we're getting there. Adam's been helping me with exercises that shrink the waist. Let me just say this disclaimer, not because he feels like I need to. He tells me I'm beautiful all the time. It's not that, but I asked him specifically to help me with this area. It's not bad at all. It, it's great. It's here, I've got some weight on me. My hips, I got some weight on me, but here is, here's my body. And you could see the difference between my pants pulled up and down, like here, here. My window and my blinds are wide open. My neighbors are probably like, what in the world is happening right now? And you know, bent over, you could see. I just got like a little of a mom pooch and it's all worth it for you, right? I give up my abs 10 times over for my amazing miracle baby. Uh, yeah? Are you saying mom, you're beautiful? We love you guys so much and we will see you in the next one. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye?